Now, aside from fangirling Tony Fauci on live television, there's nothing much Jeb Bush's former flack loves more than insurrection. It's all she talks about. She can't let it go. That's why, with waning interest in the events of January 6th, Nicole Wallace is identifying a new insurrection, saying, let's go, Brandon. This was her reaction to an Oregon man who uttered the phrase on a Christmas Eve call with Joe Biden. <laughs> I don't know where to start. Let me tell you why this matters. Um, the asymmetry has always been what advantages the Trump right more than anything else. And the asymmetry of saying F you to a sitting president on a call in front of your four kids. Don't look past this. Don't look at this as a story about giving airtime to a MAGA guy. This is the slow motion insurrection, Jason, in, in full color. A slow motion insurrection. Victor Davis Hanson is with the Hoover Institution and he joins us live. I see your smile, Victor. I spoke to you a little over a week ago and we talked about these fads, trends, verbal tics that seem to take over the human mind, many times the mind of the left, save our democracy, racial equity, social justice, and now insurrection seems to be the most frequent and recent mental tick, earworm. Yeah, I mean, if saying let's go Brandon is insurrectionary, what would be a CNN contributor holding up the facsimile of Donald Trump's decapitated head? Or what was night after night in Central Park uh, having a look-alike Donald Trump as Julius Caesar being stabbed repeatedly to death? Or what was Hillary Clinton saying after the election that the elected president was not legitimate and urging Joe Biden not to concede under any circumstances? Or for that yes. matter, what was this Obama Pentagon lawyer writing in foreign policy 11 days into the Trump term that there, we should consider removing Trump either by the 25th Amendment, impeachment, or a military coup? And military coup was on the minds of a lot of uh, retired generals. We had two that wrote letters that Mark Milley should intervene. We had another distinguished admiral said that Trump should leave the sooner the better. So we know what it's really about, Will. We talked about it. That Donald Trump, old horse, has been beaten to death. So is January 6th. And they're afraid right. of democracy. They're afraid that the people are going to speak. And so all we, a month ago, we would talk about the theme, democracy is broken in 2022. There's going to be a coup right. in 2024. Then we had military officers echoing that charge. And now we have the insurrection meme. But it's all a fear of what's going to happen in the midterms. And if they were rational people, they would get around the table and say, this agenda is not good for the American people. It's not working. We need to reboot. And they can't do that because they're hardcore ideologues. You said something else that I found very fascinating. You said, this is a replacement for actually having a positive agenda, of actually doing something that helps solve the nation's problems, that in place of that, vilifying your political opponent at all times as insurrectionists or as racists is the last political tool of a failing regime. Tell me more about that, because, you know, Victor, 10 years ago, the Obama administration prided itself on having a, a transformative agenda for America. Now it's more about transforming your political opponent into the devil. It was, but even Barack Obama realized that when his agenda started to fail, he didn't reboot, but he did something else. He just disappeared. And he allowed the Democrats and Republicans to fight for the next uh, administration uh, on his last year. And he disappeared to the golf course. And you know what? His polls went up because he was just disengaged and people didn't have to hear his <laughs> sermons. And Joe Biden is president, and he can't do that. He was pretty good when he was in the basement, and he was not seen or heard very much. But the people around him are incapable, as all, you know, as all ideologues and zealots, they're incapable of self-criticism and self-introspection, and they've hijacked the Democratic Party. And the Democratic mainstream, such as it is, they're terrified of saying to them, you have destroyed our yeah. party. We either got to retire or we're going to be defeated. Do something different on the border. Regain deterrence after Afghanistan. Stop these crazy inflationary policies. Right. They could say that, but they right. can't. And so it's either Donald Trump on Monday, January 6th on Tuesday, or coup, 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 and destroy... 
democracy is destroyed on Wednesday. And, we, and you're right, right, it'll be racism or homophobia or sexism the rest of the week. And, and people right. are sick of it, and they're going to pay a price in the midterms, and they know it, and they're scared of democracy. Right. Racism on Thursday, and apparently it's insurrection on Friday. Victor Davis Hanson, thank yeah. you so much for always putting it into perspective. Thank you.